Money will not come from heaven miraculously. You have to create a, an appropriate vessel for the blessing to settle into. It's like rain is not going to make anything grow if you haven't prepared the earth. If you haven't plowed it and you haven't put in the seeds, rain is a blessing, but by itself it won't produce anything. Effort is necessary because God created the world in such a way that there's a partnership. You do your share he'll do his share. But if you don't do your share, we don't have the capacity to contain blessings unless we create a vessel for it. So effort is necessary, and it means simply we don't rely on miracles. Our job is to make the world function, not to have goodies come from some other world and ignore this world. So by making the vessel, by producing the conditions into which the blessing can come, we're elevating the world, we're giving it more structure, we're giving it more direction, purpose, and then God blesses those efforts with success. of the Abundance Journey video show and podcast. Entrepreneurs who want to create lasting prosperity and fulfillment work with me to make transformation stick. I created the Abundance Journey show because I realized that a lot of people really struggle with abundance when they don't have to. You know, abundance is actually all around you. It's at your fingertips. It's so ready to embrace you as soon as you are ready to embrace abundance. The Abundance Journey Show is really perfect for people who have an entrepreneurial mindset. These are folks who are passionate about personal growth. They love learning how spiritual insights complement business strategy. You know, if you've ever wondered what was missing, what's that secret sauce, that, that hidden something behind the scenes that just seems to pull everything together perfectly, you'll see it all come together through the Abundance Journey show. You'll know as you watch the show. I've done extensive research, had lots and lots of really great experience. I've read hundreds of books. I've spent years and years working with both corporate and personal clients one-on-one. -on -one. I also have some insider information that I'll be sharing with you. It's given me a really unique perspective on abundance, how it works, how it shows up, how you can align with it effortlessly and joyfully. Now, I believe that we are here experiencing life in order to engage, embody, express, and experience more and more love and abundance. Okay, so thank you very much for joining us. My name is Claudette Esserin Campbell, and I am the president and chairperson of the Daughters of Sheba Foundation. I just want to check to make sure you are hearing me. Okay, yes, you are. So that is a guest. That is our guest. You know, when I came across that video of her, I, I said to myself, you know, there is no 
need for me to go into my usual digging to find out who she is, what she does, and all of that. I would just play a good chunk of that video and it would give us a good idea. So we can just jump right into the conversation. So help me welcome our guest, Elaine Starling. How are you? I, I am. <laughs> I'm so fabulous. I'm so happy to be here because honestly, abundance is as easy as breathing. And I want people to understand that and grasp that so that you can savor every single moment of your life as the blessing it is intended to be. That's my goal. And that's what we're going to accomplish with you right now through this conversation. Is that okay? That's, that's <laughs> perfect. <laughs> that's pitch perfect. That's what I want to hear. So people, you're watching A Woman's Prerogative. It is one of the monthly shows of the Daughters of Shiva Foundation. The Daughters of Shiva Foundation is a Canadian registered, Canadian based nonprofit organization serving women. I've had people ask me, so what exactly do you do at this foundation? So what we do exactly at this foundation is to inspire, educate, inform women of all things related to life. And um, we also have actual interventions where, but we're very selective about intervention because as we're going to discuss tonight about abundance, everybody can do it for themselves. So we don't necessarily intervene until, and Elaine said to me um, earlier, you know, um, we do this from a, I, I do this from a spiritual perspective and I laughed because she thought, you know, can I share that? You know, everything that I do, Elaine, is spiritual. <laughs> so while I'm not religious, um, I am spiritual. And for the past decade or more than two decades, that's how I've lived my life. So the Daughters of Sheba Foundation is grounded in, in spiritual, spiritual teaching, spiritual lessons, spiritual insight. But we often are guided by spirit to help a woman with a particular need that she might have. It might, she might need a hundred dollars, she might need a thousand dollars, whatever it is that we are guided to do it and we do our checks, we will help. But um, our work is mainly virtual, it's mainly inspirational, inspirational, it's mainly educational. And it came about, sorry to be taking up a, a little bit of the time, it came about um after um my husband of five months was murdered back in jamaica and i needed to find something to to channel my energy um woman's issue has always been from i was seven years old woman's issue is always my thing but i needed a practical way to channel my energy and take the focus off of me and and so that's what i decided to do and i am blessed with very three very good friends at the time and my daughter who decided to come on board with me. So here we are. So thank you for allowing me to say that, Elaine. Um, now over to you. I want, I'm basically giving you the floor. I just want to tell people who don't know you because I know some of your friends are watching. It's not supposed to be 8 p.m. Jamaica time. I'm just getting a message. It's 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. It's 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, which is 7 p.m. in Jamaica. And uh, Anyhow, so um, Elaine is what, she, I, I don't know, she will tell us where the title came from, the Abundance Ambassador. She's an international speaker. And those of you who know TEDx, she has and is a presenter on TEDx, and she hosts a podcast called The Abundance Journey. As well, as if that wasn't enough, Elaine is also a best-selling author, and the name of her book is Five Steps to Activate Your Abundance. So those are the steps we we're going to learn about tonight, and so that even I can start to reactivate and escalate my abundance. So over to you, Ellen. <laughs> Absolutely. I am so delighted to be here because this was not a journey that I originally expected. I had a background in marketing. I ran my own firm and I was really frustrated because I could tell the writing on the wall, my business was not going to keep going the way I needed it to. I, I could not for the life of me figure out how to improve it and make it better. So I was ready to go on a vacation anyway. So my husband and I went to New Zealand and on New Year's Day, 2005, 
I was blessed to have a stroke. And I always say blessed because during my stroke, I got to have a conversation with our higher power and I got a complete download about how everything works, why we're alive, how we can live our best lives and what happens next after this life. And I always tell people, don't worry about that part. It's a graduation. It is not an ending, not by a long shot. It's kind of like the difference between kindergarten and first grade. I mean, when I was in kindergarten, there was nap time. And in first grade, there was no more nap time. Well, when you're physical, you have a body. And when you're not physical, you don't have a body. But there's still a whole lot going on and you're still learning and growing. And this is an incredible opportunity that you have because you are actually in partnership with the divine. You are a full on partner with the divine. One of the messages that I received is if you if you look at an atom, if you were to consider the nucleus of an atom and made it the size of a peanut, mm -hmm. well, then the entirety of the atom would be about the size of a baseball stadium with all the parking. It's really big. And the electrons and positrons are floating around in all that space. And they are way tinier than that peanut of the nucleus in the middle. Wow. Well, scientists have always thought, wow, there's all this empty space. space. And I was told that's not empty. That's where the divine lives. The divine is within you, living in every single cell in your body, enjoying experiencing life as you. They're not interested in dictating terms. They're not trying to take over. You have more power than you can imagine. You I hope you don't mind if I interject from time go to ahead. time. You said something a while ago. Is that what people normally refer and the Bible or wherever refer to as free will that we have? You definitely have free will. In fact, I'll, sh I'll share another story with you. Just a few months ago, I was washing dishes in my kitchen and I was musing over why is it sometimes it just takes us a long time to make progress on whatever it is we're working on. And all of a sudden I felt this really loud, forceful voice in my body. And it said, when you deny your power, your power is denied to you. Oh, wow. When you acknowledge your power, your power is shown to you. You are more powerful than you can imagine. And it was just really clear that the divine wants us to take off the training wheels. Stop pretending that you're a little ant down in the... In, no, no, you are in partnership with the divine. Think of it this way. It's like your life is a divine GPS app, mm -hmm. okay? So you have the opportunity through using your intention, which is what you wanna create and how you wanna feel as you're creating it. You set your intention and that's the address that you're giving the divine. Then you focus your attention on everything that aligns with your intention. Because too often we're distracted by things that are bad in the world and problems and terrifying things. And that's just trying to get you to focus on what really matters, get you to stay in that space of love and gratitude. And I know people are going to go, oh, yeah, but how does that relate to money? <laughs> right? It relates to money because money is as easy as breathing. Now, unless you suffer from asthma or <laughs> emphysema or something, most of us, we don't really struggle to breathe. We don't even think about it because it's so easy. It's so automatic. And every once in a while, you take a really deep breath and then you sigh really big. You can breathe as deeply or as shallowly as you want, whenever you want. Well, money is exactly the same. The difference is you haven't put a lot of conditions around breathing. You haven't put a lot of requirements around breathing. You haven't judged breathing. You allow it to flow. There is a different kind of relationship that you have with money. And it starts with how you feel on the inside. I call this, yeah, baby, energy. <laughs> it's that energy when you don't know what's going to happen. You don't know what's going on. You're excited. You're delighted. You're curious. You're interested. And it doesn't matter if something is kind of sideways because you can roll with it. You know you're capable, you're resourceful, you can deal. It's like a massive pile of presents and it's all really good. And Let me add something there on that, on yeah. that, sorry yeah. to, 
<laughs> I, 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 hear, I can hear people saying who are not accustomed to this kind of teaching information and all of that. Um, I know I was one many years ago who, when I first heard it, that was my thought, that it's easy for you to say, you live in the United States, you live in um, California, you know, where the streets are lined with, with gold, <laughs> milk and honey. Um, what about the person who, who is living in a third world country? A lot of our audience, thank you everyone for, for, for following us. We have, we recently, for, I told you we are in our four, fourth year and um, we, we, for three years, we had 3K people following us. And then in the last six weeks, we shot up to 13K. I didn't pay a cent. People have just found us and have started to follow us. Now, what about some of our followers who are, a lot of who are in Nigeria, who are in Ghana, who are in South Africa, I'm calling the names of the country where countries where the people who have started following us are, people who are in Jamaica, people in the United States and here in Canada. Uh, we have people in Liberia, we have people in the Philippines. Um, I have always wanted this to be an international an internationally focused organization, and that's where we're heading. So speak to those people who you're saying that money is easy to, to, to have. So what I want you to understand, and I sincerely hope you pick up on my energy, everything is energy. And my energy is now connected to yours. When you are dealing with a challenging situation, the situation is just what's happening. There's two different people inside you. There is your human self, which is usually focused on doubt and fear. And there is your higher self, which is focused on love and gratitude. And you can always tell the difference because your human self is very emotional and reactive. You get pissed off and you're not happy and you want to fix something because if only you could tell people why you are right and they are wrong, then everything would be good. That's the human self. The higher self is able to step back and look at whatever is happening as this is just what's happening. This other person is just having this particular experience. It's their perspective. Because one perspective is a little tiny thread in the quantum field. It is not the entirety of the quantum field. The human mind cannot encompass the entirety of everything that's going on. So when mm -hmm. you notice that you're in that knee-jerk reactive space, that your human self, and we usually start there, take a moment to take a deep breath, step back and go, okay, what's going on here is just what's happening in the moment. I have the opportunity to respond with gratitude and compassion to whatever the situation is. How can I learn more about myself and who I am being? See, one more thing that I just want to really help people understand. There are some key things that each of us really wants that we want to experience in our lives. We want to feel loved. We want to feel safe. We want to feel connected. We want to feel valuable, important to somebody. We want to feel seen and we want to feel heard. Those are the biggies that we really, really want. Now, the huge irony is it doesn't matter what other people say or do around you. Sure, it's nice to get compliments. It's nice to have something happen that, that you want in your life. In reality, the only person you will ever believe you. about those things is you. You're the only one you'll believe. Somebody can compliment you out the world and and you won't believe it. You'll deny it. You won't let it in. So could I share another story? I know oh, yeah. just please, going on. Please, 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 I'm going please. on and on and on. And I'm very open to questions too. Um, so I was backing out of a parking place. I was driving my husband's truck and it's a rather large vehicle and I'm not too good with spatial awareness. And so I was very, very cautiously backing out of this parking space. And out of the corner of my eye, I saw somebody just flying through the parking lot. And I thought, boy, that is not safe. That's kind of scary. And all of a sudden I heard a honk. And I didn't look, I didn't look, but I thought somebody was honking at me and it just triggered me. I was immediately pissed off. And my mind, I was just like, oh, 
that, that's so rude. How can't, uh, how dare they? That's outrageous. <laughs> just, just going for it. And all of a sudden I heard the divine go, ah, oh, honey, every single moment is designed to be a blessing for you. You're making up a story as if this isn't a blessing for you. What would be a better story that turns this into a blessing? And I really resisted at first because I was full of righteous indignation and I was having fun with it too. But I finally <laughs> stepped back and I was like, okay, well, maybe I was about to hit something and they didn't have time to put their car in park, jump out, run around, knock on my window and warn me. So they saved me uh, damage, expenses, time, frustration, all that stuff. So that could be a big blessing. Or maybe they were telling me, hey, you got this. You have enough room. You can get out because they could tell I was nervous about getting out of the parking mm -hmm. space. And they were right. I had to really crank on the wheel. But I finally got out of that parking space. And I finally realized the true message that the divine was trying to get through to me. I'm the only one who can let the blessing in. I'm the one making up the story in my head about whatever's happening in my environment. Mm -hmm. I'm the one who decides that this is a blessing and allows myself to experience the blessing. So no matter what your conditions are, no matter what your circumstance is, somehow this is designed to be a blessing for you. What could you learn about yourself? How could you support yourself in this moment by loving yourself recognizing how safe you are in supporting yourself, feeling deeply connected to yourself and to your higher power, feeling that sense of value that you are important enough to support and be there for yourself, to see yourself, to hear yourself. You can give yourself these gifts. It's up to you to receive them. So... Uh... I don't know if I said it in my ramble earlier. I just want to acknowledge um, some of you, a couple of your friends, Tanya Benedict. Thank you, Tanya, for being with us. And Dorchi Mushachu. Um, she, and one of them, is, I don't know if I'm pronouncing her name correctly. Dorchi said, you're, apart from saying that you're amazing, she said <laughs> you can be abundant regardless of your circumstances and that we create our own reality. And I remember the first time I heard those statements. This was 20 odd years ago. I was still living in Jamaica. This was after living in Europe for a while. And I had returned to Jamaica. And after a few years, I came across a, a, a different kind of church. and this was basically the teaching that you create your own reality um you know all of what you're saying you know and at first it was hard for me to understand you know i was like what do you mean i create my own reality did i create waking growing up in this country where things were scarce all that what, what exactly do you mean by I create my own reality? As far as my mother was concerned, we were poor. She made me know that every single day we had, I never went to bed hungry, but she said we were poor. Um, so, you know, I know people are watching us. I know my audience who are watching us now who are saying that you're full of shit, lady. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm going back to the stories that you're telling yourself. Because mm -hmm. your circumstance is your circumstance, okay? That is just this moment in time. It's a snapshot that you're looking at. Now, when you are feeling grateful and happy and playful, you notice things in your environment that you do not notice when you're pissed off and you're angry and you're frustrated. Science shows that when we're in those frames of mind, that pissed off, angry, frustrated, it actually closes down your peripheral vision. It gives you tunnel vision and you don't see opportunities that are right there at the exact same time as when you're focusing on all the things you do not like about your life. The fastest way to shift into an abundance mindset is to set your intention, which is what you want to create and how you want to feel as you do it. The second thing is focus your attention on everything that is working for you in your life right now. And sometimes we have to go way far out there and go, you know, I like the bird song. <laughs> you know, I'm grasping at straws here, but 
I like being able to breathe with ease because I had a cold last week and now I can actually breathe. That's a big improvement. Yeah. You know, yeah. <laughs> start wherever you have to start to find things that you can be grateful for because then it starts to build. And when you are in that space of gratitude, it opens up your peripheral vision. So if you've ever watched Shooting Stars, I mean, sure, mm -hmm. you have to focus at one part of the star field, but then you open your peripheral vision. So any little stray bit of light grabs your attention and you actually see the shooting star. It's the same thing with creating abundance in your life. Start with gratitude. That is the acorn to your tree of abundance. And then open up your peripheral vision to all the other opportunities that are out there. Most importantly, don't make it all about you. Focus on the people around you. Who can you help? Because when you can improve their life, you are demonstrating abundance. You are being abundance. And whatever you put out there is amplified and returned seven times over, seven times over. So show up in the world, not just to benefit yourself, but to benefit others because it comes right back to you in ways you could never imagine. I was telling you, uh, in such a short time, I told you so many things. <laughs> <laughs> I was telling you earlier that, you know, I, I, I took on two trolls on, on our thing. And one of them said to me, um, you know, what does this foundation do? And when I told her, you know, about being inspirational, educational, um, some little bit of entertainment, spiritual and economic intervention, you know, only thing she wanted to hear was economic intervention. Um, that, you know, we would give her money, you know, and I said, no, it doesn't work like that, you know. Um, so the reason I am repeating this is that that too was my mindset when I came into this kind of teaching about abundance mindset 20 odd years ago, and um, it didn't work for me. I, I, I'm sure you have read, I, I say, I'm, sure, I'm sure you have read though, Catherine Ponder, um, her book, The Dynamic Laws of Prosperity. That was the first book I read when I came into this teaching and I was all over it and it didn't work. I did not become a millionaire, you know, overnight, you know, and I was sort of disappointed. Thanks for joining us, Clara. Clara Brown is, is one of our directors of this foundation. I did not become a millionaire overnight. So I gave up that book and I switched to her other book, dynamic laws of prayer and that's when things shifted for me yeah as you're saying interesting. yeah that's when things shifted for me when i switched to prayer and affirmation well the thing that people don't understand is there is a vibe that you have inside yourself it's how you speak to yourself how you encourage yourself how you inspire yourself how you uplift yourself and all of that ends up being reflected in your physical world. So the better you are at self-praise, self-acknowledgement, self-appreciation, bolstering your courage, stepping out into a situation where you can be the love in the moment for yourself and for others. One of the messages that I receive from the divine, there are three key things the divine wants you to do. The first one, is be love right now. Be love in this moment. Instead of being angry and frustrated and whatever, just take a deep breath, be love and compassion in this moment. And immediately that takes you out of yourself, puts you in a higher space and helps you focus on other people and how you can truly show up for them, how you can be that open loving space that is the foundation that grows abundance. That's step one, be the love that is needed here. Step two, Notice the love that's already present here. It's just like my, like my experience backing out of that parking space. The blessings are here, but we're oblivious. We're not paying attention. We expect low-hanging fruit to smack us upside the head. And then we go, oh, there it is. No, dig under the bushes. Look behind, <laughs> you know, look deeper into yourself. What are you learning about yourself? What are you discovering about yourself? What do you admire about yourself that you never noticed before? There are untold amounts of love and blessings in every single moment for you, but you've got to pay attention. That's number two. Number three, 
come together with other people because every time you do, you collaborate to create more love. We are here to help expand the divine. This is actually the cutting edge of the divine. They were explaining to me, look, when everything is already love, how do you create more love? You create human beings who pretend that sometimes things aren't all that great. They experience contrast, the difference between what is wanted and what is not wanted. And we are continually challenged to step through that contrast and find the love and be the love and share the love. And every time we do that, we expand the divine. I'm simply trying to play devil's advocate here because, <laughs> Go for um, it. Go because for it. talking with me, if you if you just focus on me, all I'm going to do is this because I've been exposed to this and I've been trying to live this way for the last 25 years. Um, as as I mentioned, the reason for this organization is to do exactly what you said, to share the yes. love that we have. So myself, Clara Brown, who is watching, um, Gloria, who is currently in the, in the United Kingdom visiting with her family, and even my daughter, who I only about two or three years ago realized that this child, she's a 30 odd year old woman, but <laughs> realized that this child was actually devouring Catherine Ponder's book, Dynamic Laws of Prayer and Prosperity and has been putting it into practice. And um, a lot of people think that when you talk about love and this and that, you know, that then why do we have so much war going on? Right now there's a war going on between Israel and, and Palestine. You know, there, there's so much confusion and chaos in the world. Where is the love, um, Elaine? And it requires having a bigger picture about what's going on. If you've ever read the book Power Versus Force by David Hawkins or mm -hmm. any of his books, he's got a, a chart that shows different levels of consciousness. And 200 and below is survival. The lowest is shame and blame. Those are the lowest levels of consciousness. When you get to higher levels of consciousness, like love, at which is 500 when you get to love, he says, you know, a really interesting thing happens because humans live in a world of duality, the difference between what is wanted and what is not wanted. We have hot, we have cold, we have yes, we have no, we have mm -hmm. up, we have down. We have opposites so that we can kind of get a feel for where we are. And because we live in this dualistic world, every time you commit to showing up as love, the opposite shows up to give you the opportunity to recommit yeah. and recommit and recommit. And if you've ever run into similar situations, like maybe a different relationship, but man, you swear you're just living the same relationship over again. And it's the same frustrations and the same irritations. Yes, because you have the opportunity to learn from this relationship, learn more about yourself and show up at a higher level than you did before. So every single thing we experience, we are challenged to choose, to choose love in the moment. And when we do that inside, and I talk a lot about how you're feeling, because it's very tangible. We can feel when we're pissed off and yeah. it feels almost powerful, doesn't it? It's like, man, this righteous indignation, they shouldn't be doing that. Urgh. Well, instead of that being powerful to you, you're actually shrinking. You're shrinking yourself. And instead, I want you to expand and love helps you expand. Now, if you listen to my TEDx talk, which is called Abundance is a Choice, mm -hmm. I talk about the two things that you have total control over that change everything. The first one is your intention. The second one is your attention. And if you pick up a copy of my book, it's available in lots of different formats, five steps to activate your abundance. I talk about five different steps and these key things are actually how you focus your attention on what is wanted. So I'm going to take you through those five steps. And it's really going to surprise you how this works. Hold on. Let me get pen and paper. Sure, sure, sure. Okay, go. So say we're having this conversation. First step is gratitude. Because every single moment is designed to be a blessing for you. And when you embrace it with gratitude, 
as I've said before, gratitude is the acorn to your abundance tree. So start with gratitude. First of all, I'm so delighted and I'm so grateful that we're having this conversation because you are getting me to stretch and share in a new different way. And I love that. I love that because it expands me and it expands the abundance that we share. Yay. How can it get even better? Than that? <laughs> Second thing, number two, acknowledge something you heard. It was an aha for you. And that was maybe an aha, aha. an aha, an insight. Because maybe you've been focusing on your external world and going, well, this sucks. This really stinks. This is not what I want. This is, ugh, why is this happening in my world? This just is so wrong. And instead, now you know, it starts from the inside and what you are saying to yourself. That's so powerful because you can control what you say to yourself. Mm -hmm. You don't have to say, I am so poor. You can say, I am so innovative. I'm so smart. I'm so capable and resourceful that new opportunities for money are coming to me every single day. You know, the that energy was, feels totally different. That was one of the major shifts that I had to learn because I kept, and you know, on, you know, on a religious perspective, they said to always be careful of the words that follow I am. And I was always saying the poor thing. I was always labeling myself as poor. Mm -mm. Yeah, the other thing that I recently learned, I, I'll get back to the five steps, but I'm going to yeah, digress yeah. and go in oh, a different yeah. direction because it's really powerful and it's really important. I want you to get the book, A Happy Little Pocket Full of Money. A Happy Little Pocket Full of Money. It will answer a lot of your questions about the dynamics of how money shows up and the brainwashing that you've been exposed to and accidentally been doing to yourself and allow you to move through that. Well, one of the key things that I discovered in reading this book is the power of goals that are talked about in the present moment. And they specifically say, I am whatever it is you want to experience. Mm -hmm. So I am 150 pounds, size eight, which will be really nice when that happens. <laughs> I am, right? So I am, because now is the only moment you have. If you're talking about the past or you're talking about the future, you're doing it right now. And all the rest of it is pretend. So declare your goal right now. I am, and I was thinking, you know, that's, that's a cool concept. I would love if that had actually happened in my life. And then I got a, like, upside the head with another <laughs> one. <laughs> and the mind's like, uh, you know, think about your husband, maybe. I was like, oh, yeah. You know, before we got married, I used to have these conversations with him. And I just say, you know, I am so in love with you. I am more in love with you every single day. I am so grateful that I get to share my life with you. I am so excited about the way you think about the world because it's so different than the way I think about the world. And when I can let it in, it really enhances my experience. I'm so in love with you. And I realized, yes, I was celebrating in, the, in that moment. I was truly in that space of celebration and delight. And at the same time, totally unknowingly, I was creating that future too. We've been together for 44 years and we are more in love every day. 44 it's real. years. 44 years. Wow. It happens. It's real. You don't need to control it. That's one of the biggest mistakes we make as human beings. We're trying to control things. We want to make sure we know how everything's going to happen, how it's going to show up. We want proof. We want to be able to duplicate it every time. And the divine has unbelievable ways of bringing things into you, things that you would never anticipate that you could never make happen on your own. So get out of your own way. So step one is gratitude. Step two is acknowledge something you heard that was an aha for you, an insight for you, something new that maybe you haven't thought about before. And the example that I'm using is instead of looking at your external world and what's happening, you're gonna look at your internal world and how you're treating yourself. You need to be your best friend friend and your biggest cheerleader. We you always need talk to about believe in yourself. Yes. You've got to root for you. 
no matter what is happening in your life, believe in yourself and support yourself. Okay. That's the aha that I'm using as an example here. Step three is appreciate the difference it can make in your life when you actually do what you're acknowledging. It's not enough just to go, oh, what a good idea. And then go off and, you know, have dinner. <laughs> no, it's a good idea. Now, here's the difference it can make in my life. I don't have to control my outside world. I okay, can. so give us an example. So give us a practical example of an insight and how to appreciate that difference that you, you mentioned. So inside is how I feel about myself and what I'm saying to myself. Outside is I just had a car accident. Now, I could be saying, what an idiot. I can't believe I did that. And oh, terrible luck. I, this, this kind of junk always happens to me. Why mm -hmm. me? I don't, I don't deserve this. Right? I could go down that road. And I'm looking at myself. And what am I saying to myself? Or I could say, wow, I'm so grateful nobody was hurt in this accident. I'm so grateful I've got insurance. I'm so grateful that the car I'm driving was pretty much ready for the scrap heap anyway. So, you know, not a big deal. And you can feel the difference in your energy and how you feel in your body. You can feel the constriction when you're angry and frustrated and beating up on yourself. And you can feel the relief, the expansion when you don't have to control everything. And instead, you can be grateful for what is. Okay? That's an example of inside versus outside. What happens on the outside is just what's happening. What's happening on the inside is more important. And that's what you're telling yourself. And you will find that the more you tell yourself what you're doing well and what you're proud of yourself for and what you admire about <laughs> yourself and the progress that you're making, the more you do that, the more new opportunities are going to be much more obvious to you. I got to tell you, and I know I'm digressing again. There are oh, so no, many times fine. I do this little exercise. It's called celebrate in advance. So there are times when I will celebrate in advance that I want to hear from a couple of mentors today that I'm thinking through a project and I, I want some guidance. And I'm really grateful that I will hear from two mentors today. And then I'm out living life. I'm, I'm in the grocery store. I'm in the line getting some coffee. And there are total strangers in front of me. I have no idea who these people are. I don't even know what they're talking about. But something they say triggers something in me. It's like, that's exactly what I needed to hear. And mm -hmm. the insights just keep pouring in. But I never, never would have been in a space to receive that if I hadn't celebrated in advance and known in my heart that the message was coming. I'm ready to let it in. Okay. We're on step three. Step one is gratitude. Step two is acknowledge something you heard that was an insight for you and aha for you. Step three is appreciate the difference it can make in your life when you actually apply that insight in your life. Step four is to activate it. There's three different ways you can activate it. Grab a calendar and schedule time to do it. The second way is create a physical trigger. Like maybe you cross your fingers or you tug on your earlobe as a reminder that this is what you're going to do. I'm, I'm going to look inside. doesn't matter what's happening. I'm just going to look inside at what's going on for me. Or you can declare publicly. It really helps if you've got an accountability buddy. And you can say, please notice when I'm reacting to the outside world and I'm not going inside. Notice when I'm beating up on myself. Mm -hmm. Please help me notice what I'm doing well and encourage me to praise myself, to acknowledge myself. Okay. So Somebody's those are the three different you ways. Thanks, Good. My pleasure. It's such an honor to be here with you. Step five is celebrate your progress. So often we make the mistake of thinking, okay, this is going to work for me and I want a million bucks tomorrow. <laughs> Where's my million bucks? Yeah, it doesn't work that way. It's an unfolding. And one of the messages that I received very recently, because I know that I need to put my attention on all the things that are working for me, and every moment is designed to be a blessing. And so I got this download from the divine. Every moment is there serving my intention. Sometimes it doesn't look like it. 
And the best analogy I thought of is say you're sick and you go to the doctor and they're like, hey, we know exactly what you have and we can cure you with this shot. Well, if you only took a snapshot of getting poked in the arm with something really sharp, that wouldn't be very fun. And you'd go, well, this sucks. That's not working. <laughs> it's part of the unfolding of your health, of your vibrant health. So instead of viewing this as this is going in the wrong direction, how is this serving me? How is this contributing to my intention? Because it always is. Mm -hmm. Every every December, you know, approaching the end of the year, um, I I share with our audience mm -hmm. that we don't set goals, um, we set our intentions. And I, I actually used to do a physical vision board. Now I do it virtually. Um, and it's something that I feel works. Do you do you um, recommend vision boards? Absolutely. It definitely works because it's really interesting. The divine speaks to me often in pictures. Sometimes it's words, but it's often in pictures. And I, I want to share another story with you because when I was having my stroke and that conversation with our higher power, it was the most intense, incredible love I've ever experienced in my life. It was like a Niagara Falls of love, just this intense, all-encompassing, miraculous love. And I came out of the stroke with absolutely no damage at all. And I was like, you know what? I liked that. I will take more of that. Please hold the stroke. Okay. I just, I just unconditional love, constantly saturating every aspect of my being. Yes, please sign me up. And I had to figure out how do I get back there from here? I did all this research, you know, Abraham Hicks and all these spiritual teachers. And everybody said, allow. You just have to allow. You try to tune in to the God of your understanding and you allow, you surrender and allow. Well, I was allowing my little heart out. And yeah, I would get downloads every once in a while and they felt great when they came through. But it was a lot closer to a leaky watering can than Niagara Falls. And so I was getting a little frustrated that this was not <laughs> as automatic, simpatico, effortless flow that I really wanted. So I was meditating and I was sitting for guidance. And I asked the divine, why isn't this allow thing working for me? That's and I me hey, I immediately got this message. What is the image that comes to mind when you think of the word allow? Now, no two people have the same relationship with words. So I do not want to put anything on anybody else. I'm strictly mm -hmm. sharing what my experience was. You can feel the vibration of different words. And I realized that for me, the word allow immediately put me behind a door with a chain on the door. And I'm peeking out the door at the divine and I'm freaking terrified because I can't control it. I don't know what's coming. I don't know how to deal with this thing. Oh my gosh. And I realized for me, the word allow is a mind-based word. And it's not the kind of relationship that I want with the divine or is possible with the divine. It's not like a horse and you're saddling it up with a bridle. You know, this is no, uh -uh. it's a partnership. And so I really had to stop and think about what is a word that works for me that reflects the kind of relationship I want to have with the divine. And I finally realized that for me, that word is welcome. I welcome the divine. I welcome abundance. I welcome great conversations with fascinating people who make me think and expand and, and learn. I welcome new opportunities, new ideas, because the possibilities are beyond your knowing. It is not a knowing that you need. It's a knowing in your body, in your heart of what's possible for you, of what you would love to experience in your life. So yes, vision boards are incredibly powerful because your mind actually operates more on pictures than on words. At the same time, words bring up pictures sometimes. So look closely at what you're saying to yourself and what you would like to experience in your life, what you, what you desire, what you choose. And then pay attention to the words that you're using. I am learning to eliminate the word want. I no longer want anything. I choose, I decide, I 
desire I wish for, but want always leaves me wanting. And I don't, I don't desire wanting. <laughs> Although I have a habit of using that word all the time. Um, our, our dear Colleen, who is a, a member of the Dr. Sashiva Foundation, she says, my mother constantly keep telling herself how ugly she's looking. I had to tell her to stop saying those negative words as she's believing it. Worse, everyone is saying I'm looking like my mother these days. Is that your motivation, Colleen, for telling your mom to stop it? You know, you're not ugly. I'm kidding. No, but, but it's true. My story with that, with my mom, is that my mother, uh, this is not her, you know, everybody has a nickname. And her nickname was Cherry, you know, the cherry fruit. Yeah. Yeah. And she would keep on saying in later years that, oh, and I'm, she said it in Jamaican, but I'm saying it in proper English. Um, she would say, oh, once I was cherry, but now I'm just a branch, you know, or <laughs> just, yeah. So she, she was saying she's no longer productive. She's no longer the fruit. She's just a dead old branch. And actually, when I came into what you're talking about, the teaching, and I started Hearing her saying this and looking at her, she was actually drying up. Yeah. Yeah. She you become actually, what you tell yourself you are. Yeah. She was you actually do. drying up. You know, I had yeah. to start getting her on vitamins and stuff like that. But she kept saying these things. So, Colleen, I know exactly what you're talking about. And, you know, I would encourage you to use those I am statements with your mom. No, she's you know, mom. Just oh, okay. Oh, well, well, you mean her mom? Oh, oh, okay. Oh, oh, her mom. Her okay, mom. sorry. Because, because if, if she's saying that she doesn't feel beautiful, you can say, Mom, I am so happy that I get to share life with you because I see just how incredibly rich and deep your beauty truly is. And it's not a matter of lines on your face. In fact, we've all seen photos of people who are very lined and they are gorgeous. You, the luminosity of their being shines through their eyes and their smile and every single wrinkle. I am so honored and blessed that I get to share that with you. And when you say that, she might feel it. She might not believe it at first. She has to be willing to let it in. But if you can do that, that will help her find her way to a better conversation. <laughs> And Cleo is saying our words take on flesh. I would go a little further with that, Cleo. I would say, at least in my experience, it's not merely the words, but the passion, the emotion that fuel the word that words that we use. Because if you just say, um, I think, if you just say, ah, I'm short of money or something, you know, we don't have we don't have enough by itself. I feel. Tell me if I'm wrong, Elaine. By itself, that's that's there that's out there but if you are saying it with such passion you know tears in your eyes you know how broke you are you're going to be broke mm -hmm. and you can that's say you can say you know i'm 50 percent of the way there to cover this bill and i'm so excited that more money is coming my way i don't know how it's going to show up but there are going to be opportunities for me to earn some extra money receive money in some way i don't know what that's going to look like you don't have to know. See, that's one of the biggest mistakes that we make is we use that word how. How is when our human self is trying to take over and control everything. Your job is not necessarily the how. Your job is what is wanted and what is the vibration that you're putting out there. And then what's happening in your environment? Open that peripheral vision. Is there an opportunity to babysit? Can I deliver the newspapers for my friend? Can I, you know, what are some other opportunities that are out there that will bring money to me? You can't sit on the couch and wish for it. You have to be very clear. I'm ready to receive 50% more so I can pay this bill. And I'm so happy and excited. And I'm, I'm grateful for the opportunity to pay this bill because every time I pay with gratitude for something that I received, more Things to be grateful for are coming my way. Money is energy. Most people money don't understand this. Energy. Money is energy. It is a form of energy. We have put 
controls around it. Imagine what your relationship with money is like and start thinking about what your relationship with breath and breathing is like. Shift your relationship with money to be more like your relationship with breath. It's not conditional. You breathe anytime you want to, as deeply as you want to. Sorry, not want, desire. As <laughs> as want. <laughs> it's a process, I'm learning. It is. Yeah. <laughs> Elaine, you know, we've been talking a lot about money and I don't want people to leave here thinking that abundance is only about money. Um, but so I, I want us to go to that. Um, because abundance is is yes it's it's when we say abundance the first thing that comes to mind is money but i've also found and just to what you were saying a while ago is that once i once i can keep myself because you you're not always in that mindset and once i can keep myself in that mindset you know um it's not that i have more money it's that I'm finding that I find less need to spend unnecessarily. I, well, I live. Mm -hmm. you, you, there are a lot of ways that we embrace money. You can make more money, you can save more money, or you can keep more money by not paying taxes or paying a lower amount. So there's lots of different things that you can do to facilitate the flow of money. Yeah. And there is so much more abundance in everything around you. Like I was talking about getting into that space of gratitude. I've got 50% of the money I am going to use to pay my bill. And I'm so happy and grateful that more ways to make money are going to show up for me today. I'm grateful in advance. I have no idea how it's going to show up. Just like I'm asking to meet two mentors today. No idea who that's going to be. And there's going to be more money coming in for me today. Now I go out in my day. My peripheral vision is activated because I've already said, I am so happy and grateful that money is finding me today. And now I notice these are different opportunities for me to make money. I'm not steering my feet going, oh, I don't have enough money. No, I'm grateful right now for what I already have and the total expectation and knowing that more is on its way. And I'm excited. And I talk with people I'm like, you know, this is really exciting. More money is going to find me today. Any ideas? What do you think? What, is there something I could do for you that would help contribute to the money that's coming into me today? When you are there to serve and help other people improve their lives, it comes back to you sevenfold. It does. Minimum. Minimum. No, it does. I, I, I've experienced that, you know, and, and um, even to, and you, you have, you feel different about yourself. Yes. Totally. You feel different about yourself because um, when I, like today, I was talking to several people as I do on a daily basis, not work related, but within our group and stuff. And I just felt good about being able to help um, whether it's financially or it's with a kind word or something, it just feels different. And I feel wealthy. <laughs> That's why inspiration is so important. We have to get ourselves up. We have to lift our own vibration, our own energy. When we do and we choose to be inspired, because truly it's a choice. You could be pouty, you could be frustrated, you could be irritated, or you could decide to be curious and interested and excited and delighted and inspired. And when you do that, you're opening yourself up for more possibilities. It is an internal feeling and a choice that you make in the moment of how you're going to feel. And then the opportunities show up in the real world all around you. But that's the order that things show up in. It's not out there first. I'm going to win the lottery and then I'm going to have a lot of money. No. Yeah. I am the lottery. I am abundance. I am a miracle. And I receive all kinds of awesome things throughout my life. So I receive gifts from people that I totally didn't expect. Someone brought some wonderful fresh vegetables over from their garden. I didn't do anything. They just showed up with these awesome veggies. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. How can it get even that's money you can have to spend? Yes. And that's another thing. 
When you are dealing with a challenging situation, this is a brilliant thing to say. It really works. No matter what's going on, good or bad, you say, how can it get even better than this? Now, it's a twofer. How can it get even better is admitting to yourself that there are aspects of your life that are going great. Mm -hmm. There are some things that are just fine. You're hearing the bird song, okay? Might be something else that's not where you want it, but something's going well in your life. How can it get even better than this is saying, thank you for all the blessings I already have and I'm ready for more. And it's amazing what shows up. Wow. Um, like I was saying, abundance, you know, we, we're focused a lot on money and, you know, it's, as you said, it's energy and so forth. And I think um, because for so many people, the lack of money is such a stressor that that's where the focus tend to be. But that also affects your health. It affects your relationships. It affects your job. It, so, so talk to, talk to us, you know, before we wrap this up about that that aspect of feeling abundant. You know, I know people right now who they mouth platitudes about health and this and wealth and and when you look at their lives. You know, as the Bible says, by their fruits, you should know them. You know that that's a dead, dead, dead tree. <laughs> <laughs> so, so how do we, how do we balance um, being, I don't want to use the word positive because people are going to say that, you know, I'm preaching or suggesting being Pollyannas, but how do we keep this gratitude? How do we plant this acorn? And, and, and water this acorn of gratitude and allow it to, 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 to go. it's going to take time. Acorns, it takes time for that tree to go. Um, so I, yeah. I would love to help you with this. So it starts, <laughs> it starts with the rewarding experience. You are the rewarding experience. So the better you are, at being yourself and using your gifts, your skills, your abilities, your talents, your preferences to making the world a better place for the people around you, you are the rewarding experience and you are authentic. You are true to yourself in living your gifts. When you do that as a rewarding experience, you automatically create relationships because people want a rewarding experience and you're being rewarding. So of course they want to have a relationship with you. And once you do that, and you've got certain standards that you hold, this is how you show up in the world, and this is how you deliver, and this is how you communicate with people, your relationships will establish your reputation. They will share who you are being for them in the world. You control your standards. You don't control your reputation. When your rewarding experience is there and you're building relationships and you've got this reputation, the revenue is a byproduct that you can't avoid. The money is just coming in. It starts to flow. It starts to be there. So I truly want you to understand that your talents, your skills, your abilities, your interests, your preferences, your desires, those are all things that you have to bring to the table. You don't know what a gift you are to the world. And when you show up with that desire to serve others and make their lives better by using your gifts, that's when you are a rewarding experience. You get to feel the fulfillment of being your true self. That's the first abundance. Then you get the fulfillment of rewarding relationships because these are people who see your gifts and value them. They cherish how you are being in the world. That's incredible abundance. Your reputation, your standards that you're setting in the world, it sets you apart from everyone else because they know who you are. They can trust who you are being and where you're coming from and your intention to support them. That is abundance. And then the money shows up and that's abundance. Everything in your life is an opportunity for abundance. It's up to you to look at it 
understand how it supports you and turn it into abundance and prosperity for yourself. Wow. It comes to you. It really, truly does. And I know that I'm talking in a way that seems very abstract. Don't listen with your ears and with your mind and busy trying to analyze and evaluate and critique <laughs> and break it apart. Listen with your heart. Go back and listen to this again. Feel this information. And you will feel how tangible it is and what an incredible blessing you are. Wow. So, um, Carella, thanks, Carella, for joining us. Carella said that the energy that you give to someone may seem irrelevant to you, but can mean so much to someone else. Even a smile changes their day. And Carella is our... So we have the Daughters of Sheba Foundation, but we have a private group where a select few are members of. And Carella is the one who every day she sends us her energy in, 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 in various formats. And, and, and that truly blesses each and every one of us. So thank you, Carella. Um, Lorna, who is also um, a member of the Daughters of Sheba Foundation, I, I need to keep repeating this because I, I, I think... I'm not communicating well. We start at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I always <laughs> stick with Eastern Standard Time because they that doesn't change. That Jamaica doesn't have daylight saving times. We here in Canada have it. The U.S. have it. So it's so I have found over the years to stick with Eastern Standard Time. So. If you live in Jamaica, just check what is the east, what time it is for you when it's 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I believe that's 7 p.m. for you. Um, so to go back, so sorry that you you misunderstood, and anyone else who misunderstood, it's if you look at the stuff, it says Eastern Standard Time. So I want before we wrap up, um, Elaine, I want to go to your you you have a book. And is it available on Amazon? It is. Yes, it's available on Amazon worldwide uh, in paperback, in ebook, and also as an audiobook. So okay. whatever works for you, I definitely want to support your abundance. And I also want to remind you, energy cannot be created or destroyed. And since we are together here, you are connected to my energy. I'm damn good at abundance. I got to tell you, I mean, not, bra not bragging or anything, but I am the abundance ambassador for a reason because I'm opening the kimono and helping people understand the traditions, the mores, how to create a relationship with abundance that really enhances your life because it's there for you and we're connected. So abundance is coming your way. Look for it, expect it. And tell us what happened, because I can't you, wait to hear all about it. You said that you have a, a, a group, an intentions group. Is that online? Is that in person? How, how does that I have, work? I run an intention group, and I'll just share a little bit about that. Oh, yeah, so an, an intention, I got really excited about intentions, and I read a book called The Power of Eight by a woman named Lynn McTaggart. And Lynn is... a uh, journalist by trade. She lives in London. And she thought all of this stuff was hocus, hocus pocus. And she was going to prove that it didn't work. Well, she started doing all this research with scientists and doctors and evaluating things. And she's like, oh my gosh, it really truly works. And so she now teaches people how to do intentions and how to run a power of eight intention group. So eight people is kind of a great sweet spot to get together. And you hold an intention for 10 minutes total. Um, and so I read the intention three times. The first time you imagine this is the new reality and let your brain just play with what might be happening to create this. Then the second time you pull it down into your heart, surround it with love and blessings and continue to let the imagination flow. And the third time you gently, softly share that energy with a specific recipient if you're working on their health or with everybody who's ready to receive it. It's up to them to receive it. And the cool thing is you get it three times as you are sending it. It's one of the most powerful things you can do to support this planet is set 
your intention. Because the problem is when you are not deliberate about setting your intention, which is how you want to feel as you create something, okay, that's your intention. And I'll give you an example in just a second. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you don't specifically create your intention, the default human self intention is I'm going to stay safe. I'm going to play small and I want the clear instructions. I want total control. And if I can't control it, I ain't doing it. And that prevents you from experiencing the abundance you want. Okay. So an intention would be, for example, because I uh, just did a new episode of my Abundance Journey show, which is a podcast and a video show on YouTube. And I, I did Lynn's training, and then I got a download from the divine that I needed to add bookends to my intention. So okay. I always start with in love and light, because to me, that's acknowledging that the God of your understanding is an active participant in helping support your intention. The intention is what you want to create and how you want to feel while you're doing it. And then it's only good manners to say thank you. So I do. And at the very end, I say it is done. Because just like typing an address into a GPS system, if you've ever used an application that gives you directions on where you're going to go, once you've typed in the address, you're kind of done. You don't have to do anything else. Mm -hmm. And so the it is done is a reminder to me, I've done my job. So here's an example of an intention that I held earlier today. And I held it for 78 seconds, just this one, when I'm doing a group, it's 10 minutes. When I'm doing it on my own by myself, it's 78 seconds. So here's what it sounds like. In love and light, we hold the intention that we automatically tune into the vibration of the words we use, deliberately choosing empowering words that facilitate our partnership with the divine. So we enjoy vibrantly healthy, happy, prosperous lives. Thank you, divine. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It is done. You know, maybe I'm going to have to <clears throat> ask you to, to not maybe I am going to ask you to have a private session with a group of eight of us um, <laughs> on the Daughters of Fever Foundation. I can see the hands going up already. Um, I will be in touch with you and we have a, 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 a private session. Oh, yes, hold on. absolutely. Oh, somebody says my mantra from now on, how can it get even better than this? I love it. <laughs> Yeah, so I know she's going to want to be one. I know Lana is going to want to be one. <laughs> Colleen, Corella, Clara, um, myself. So that's six. We need two more. And I will be in touch with. Um, I'm one. So, but you can oh, have two I'm more. Course, I'm one of them. Yep. <laughs> so we, we, we are going to put together uh, a, a group of eight to have a session, an intention setting session with, yeah. with, with Elaine. I'll ask her when she's available and we do it in. Lana says two hands up. <laughs> we're we're, we're going to do that in, in our group. Um, before we go, I just want to recap what you said about the five, the five steps to activate yes. our abundance. Step one, acorn, gratitude. Step two, acknowledge whatever insights um, we have, you know. And I just want to give examples, at least from my own experience, that it's it's more practical for people. So um, gratitude is obvious, you know, what you're grateful for and so forth. Acknowledge insights. I I have acknowledged that um, I am I am me. I am I am the person who I am. I have certain talents, um, creative talents. I like doing this. Um, I like helping women um, however I can. I'm, I didn't win the lottery, but however I can, I, I will and help women. Um, and that I'm a strong person. I have a strong personality, but I've learned how to, 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 to not temper, but to not be pushed around, but at the same time to, to be vulnerable. Appreciate the difference it makes in you. It, 
I think I just did express how I appreciate. So appreciate is a third step to activate in our abundance. And the fourth step is to actually activate it by putting something on your calendar or getting tying a string around your finger or pulling on your ear or something to remind you um, to activate. You want to, that or one- declaring. Yeah. Or declaring, like okay. with an accountability buddy. And you just did. You're like, hey, I'm going to honor my talents and my gifts. And I really appreciate when I do honor my talents and gifts. And now I'm committing to you that I'm going to make this a daily practice. I'm going to honor my talents and gifts every day. And um, celebrate your progress. That's step However, five. Yeah. <laughs> so thank you so much, Elaine. Um, thank you. Elaine is coming to us from California. And I, I, I'm, I hope you are game to entertain in um, seven of us because you're number eight. Let me know when <laughs> you are. Give me some dates. And I will set it up with seven people from our group. We won't do it here. We, we can record it, but we probably will do it. Um, Facebook groups have a room. A, a, it's called Rooms, so we can do it in, okay. in our rooms in Facebook. Um, I haven't done that before, so I'm happy to do it. <clears throat> the other thing that we can do is if you do want to open it up to more people, we can have um, a core group of people who are more active participants, because what I like to do when I'm holding a 10 minute intention is at the end of that 10 minutes, each person describes what their experience was like, what came through their imagination, any downloads that they received, any messages that they got. And it's, it's pretty profound what comes through. Okay. So I might have misunderstood. I thought it, the maximum was eight. It can be open to There's more people. There's eight people who are the active participants who would provide feedback at the end of what their experience was like. Okay. If you want other people to be able to witness it or support it, that's up okay. to you. Okay. Okay. So I, I'll throw it out in our group. Um, I'll, I'll connect with you in terms of date. And mm -hmm. um, and because we have a group of 300 and odd people. <laughs> um, we cannot do it with 300 and odd people. <laughs> But the good news is our energy is connected. So yeah. even if you are not actively participating, even if the time doesn't work for you, it's recorded. And the go. divine is everywhere, every when. So you can experience the benefits of the intention just by watching the recording. How cool is there that? We there we go. Thank you so much, so much for being here. You were a pleasure. Not that all of my guests aren't a pleasure, but you were a pleasure because this year we're focusing on being our most innovative and resilient self as women. And abundance is, is, is at the core of that, feeling abundant, living an abundant life. So thank you, thank you, thank you for, for sharing with us. Um, I think somebody's saying something here. Oh. Uh, Elaine is saying, thank you, excellent. And um, Cleo is saying, thank you, Elaine. Very insightful, inspiring, and timely. And we will be in touch with you to, to continue the conversation. Everybody's saying thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and thanks to all of you, because you created the space for us to have this conversation. You were ready to receive it. Yes. So you got it. Congratulations. <laughs> Thanks, Elaine. Thank you so much. And I'll, I'll talk to you during the course of the week. Bye. Okay. Bye-bye.